just take a minute and go over how we use our 7k dub it's on a sterilizer it's on a steamer we use it to sterilize pasteurize do everything else that is the current temperature of the PID as you see it's hanging right there so that will blast steam out non-stop which means we're either sterilizing something or cleaning something what are we cleaning Right now I just have my old media flask in there, my old Erlenmeyer flask from some old uh, agar. Just wanted to clean it out before we use it. Throw it in there, let it steam. Cleans everything out of the inside nice and neatly for me. What else can we use it for? Great question. We'll hydrate grains with it. Cold water. We got that good, good powder. We got that good, good gypsum. Now we take our PID. I think that's what it's called. Sit that in the bottom of the grain. Not on the bottom of the pot. We put it on the bottom of the pot. It'll read falsely. So there we go. Leave it like that. Well, come back here. power because it's set to 55 celsius perfect when it reaches that temperature it'll stop come out and check on it in an hour obviously after you put the lid back on one hour into it that's very hot we grab our kernel give her another hour so we'll come out here after hour number two and some of you might be like, well, hell, you can do that in the pressure cooker in 30 minutes at 5 PSI. And guess what? You're right. But what I wouldn't be able to do in that time is come over here and make up my substrate ready to go in there next. So let's go check our grain. Got a little sample right here. Grab it. Oh, yeah. That's perfect. That mashed perfectly in my finger. And then I'm pretty sure if I take it and just pinch it right here, we'll be able to cut the top off and we won't really see too much white in there. Just looking at everything. Oh, there we go. Split perfectly. Ah. There was hardly any way. Let's grab another one. Damn it. Come on now. I need stronger thumbnails. There we go. Perfectly split, barely any white. Time to drain that and get our substrate in. Grab our bucket like this. Come over here to our strain bucket. keep anything from getting in there and it'll drain and now let's bag up our substrate instead of bagging it I'll show you another way we'll take our substrate pour that up there like that get us a big stock pot that's not used for food try to get some of the substrate in there get it all loaded up it's loaded up let's add water and pasteurize so now we got our PID down there, put our lid on, and we have one more thing we got to do before we turn this on. Got our lid buttoned down with some clothes pins, so now I'm just going to come back here and make sure our temperature's set before we put the lid on. Court, set it at 55. Now you might be like, 55 is only 135 Fahrenheit. You're correct. But what will happen is as this heats up, the outside will heat up faster than the inside. So the outside of this will get up to around 190, 180. By the time this reaches 135, what will happen, I suspect, we'll come out and check our timer in an hour, and I bet you that our PID will be reading a lot higher than 135. So let's see you in an hour. All right, so now, it's been about 45 minutes, and if you notice, 
our core temperature is at 29, starting to come up from 1920, which means our outside temperature is probably around 35 to 40 Celsius. So when our core temperature gets up to 155 or up to 55 Celsius, our surrounding substrate will probably be around the roughly the 70 Celsius, maybe a little bit less. Um, therefore, when this turns off, the core temperature will balance with that outside, and this will probably start reading around 80, and it'll stay off for about two hours. But the core temperature will be maintained, which is what we need. You're not pasteurizing unless you're maintaining the core temperature. Anything else is bullshit. Don't let nobody fool you. Oh, we're getting to the point where this is getting ready to turn off and keep on climbing. Alright, let's go give our machine a check. As you see, it's running. Chances are that's because it's in pressure relief and this will be above 54. Like I said, the glare is horrible. 75 Celsius. So, we are pasteurizing away right now, friends. And what I actually do is this. Off. On. Because I know it's been already going for an hour. Good night. I'll see you in the morning. Morning. It's the next morning. Uh, we need to pull our substrate out. And get our grain jars in. Look at that. Beautiful. These two off. I should be able to get my PID out. There we go. Let's go put this in the garage and I'll see you in a minute. Alright, so now we have our grain in here. I have just a paper towel with some water and a temperature probe in there. We'll run that out here just so we can see how hot it gets to. I wouldn't want to put that in my grain as when I pull it out. I could risk something coming into it. Uh, so now the only thing we have to do is take our the PID or thermocouple or whatever the hell this thing is called throw it on the ground you don't need it right now for what we're about to do okay put the lid on got that hanging right there set to 55 perfect I'll see you guys in an hour Oh, we got to turn this on. We're just going to set it way up so it doesn't bother me because it gets annoying. Let me grab your attention for a minute. You see that temperature right there? 213 degrees Fahrenheit. That makes me happy seeing that. Now, some of you will be like, well, it has no pressure and it's not 254 degrees Fahrenheit. I understand, but what you don't understand is really the only things that are living right now would be endospores and hyperthermophiles, or however the hell you pronounce them. What are they? Well, a hyperthermophile is an organism that is only in hot environments. Let's find some examples of them. Archaea, strain 121, living at 121 Celsius in the Pacific Ocean. All right, Pyrolubius for whatever, living at 113 in Atlantic hydrothermal events. Pyrococcus blah, 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 found in Italy. Archaeus, blah, 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 no idea. But what you don't understand is that these hypothermophiles exist in nature. It seems like more than it does in popcorn grain. Now, endospores. Why would we be talking about endospores when popcorn itself, what are we doing? We are heating, hydrating the grain and then sterilizing it so the endosperm ends up cooking the starchy stuff, which is actually the endospore. So, understanding that I'm not in the middle of the freaking Pacific Atlantic thermal vents, um, popcorn itself is an endospore. I don't need to get 254 degrees. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Argue with me why I need to and don't regurgitate. Cite me something. Please, I am listening. So, we will let this run for another two hours, and then I'll see you then. Ever wonder why a lot of mushroom farms don't pressure cook? 
they just too steamy? Why are we at home doing stuff the industry doesn't do? We're not that special. It's okay. All right, it's been off for about two hours now. Let's give her a gander. Like that, look at that. Beautiful. Shake it up to disperse the liquid inside of the jar. It's about how much water ended up going into our pot. And what does this look like when it's colonized, you may ask? Because, oh, we didn't hit pressure or temperature. It won't colonize. Well, then why do I have all of these? As you see, popcorn is my main grain. They have all been through steam sterilizer and no issues whatsoever. Squirrel chef. And it's at this point in time, I'd like to thank you for your fr time, friends. There's our substrate. It's all we have and it does not exist. Much love and stay chubby.